Ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying my videos, please click the like button. It is the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. I would be very grateful to you. The Peeping Toms, they're watching you this Easter. Scary Story, published by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1, The Unease Begins. The crisping air held the playful scent of honeysuckle as Sarah, Ben, and Emily walked home from school. The afternoon sun cast long shadows across the manicured lawns of their suburban neighborhood, each adorned with the familiar trappings of the approaching Easter holiday. Pastel-colored eggs nestled in window sixes like watchful eyes, while giant plastic bunnies, their once vibrant colors faded by years of sun exposure, stood guard outside houses. Yet, this year, the usual light-hearted chatter of the approaching holiday felt strangely hollow. Did you see Mr. Henderson's Easter Bunny costume? Sarah asked, her voice barely a whisper as she glanced nervously at the faded pink monstrosity propped up in his garage window. Moth-eaten patches marred its once fluffy surface, and its vacant eyes seemed to follow them with an unsettling intensity. Ben, the resident prankster with a shock of unruly brown hair, scoffed. That thing? More like a giant dust bunny with floppy ears. Seriously, I wouldn't trust a kid near it, afraid it might shed all over them. But Sarah wasn't so sure. A shiver ran down her spine as she remembered the scene earlier that day. While waiting for Ben and Emily outside school, she'd caught a glimpse of the costume through the garage window. It had seemed different, as if something lurked inside, manipulating the faded fabric to mimic a semblance of life. Shaking her head, she tried to dismiss the unsettling thought. It's just a costume, Sarah, Emily chimed in, her voice laced with a hint of nervousness. New to town, she hadn't witnessed the Easter traditions before. Maybe a little worn down, but nothing to be scared of. Sarah forced a smile, but the unease lingered. Easter had always been her favorite holiday, a time for family gatherings, egg hunts, and chocolate bunnies. But this year, surrounded by these unsettling decorations, a dark undercurrent seemed to pulse beneath the surface of the supposed merriment. Later that night, Sarah lay awake staring at the full moon casting an eerie glow through her window. Sleep evaded her, her mind replaying the unsettling image of the Easter Bunny costume. Every creak of the old house, every rustle of leaves outside, sent jolts of apprehension through her. Suddenly, a sharp rapping sound echoed from the roof, jolting Sarah upright in bed. Her heart pounded in her chest. It sounded like someone or something was moving around up there. Holding her breath, she crept out of bed and tiptoed towards the window. The moon cast an ethereal glow across the scene outside. Straining her eyes, she scanned the rooftop across the street. There, silhouetted against the moonlit sky, stood a figure. It was tall and thin, with a pointed head and long, spindly limbs. A wave of nausea washed over Sarah as she recognized the shape a giant Easter bunny head its vacant eyes seeming to stare directly at her window. Panic flooded her veins. This couldn't be real. Mr. Henderson was in his late seventies, nowhere near that agile. Besides, the costume was safely tucked away in his garage. The figure tilted its head towards her window, its empty eyes seeming to bore into her. A guttural whisper, barely audible over the pounding of her own heart, drifted on the night wind. Watching, Sarah stumbled back, knocking over a picture frame on the nightstand. The crash echoed through the room, shattering the eerie silence. When she dared to look back outside, the rooftop was empty, bathed in the soft glow of the moon. Was it a dream? A hallucination fueled by her overactive imagination? Her mind raced. Had she truly seen something, or had the anticipation of the holiday? and Ben's teasing about the creepy decorations finally gotten to her? 
Deciding it best not to alarm anyone, Sarah crawled back into bed, but sleep continued to elude her. The unsettling image of the figure on the rooftop and its chilling whisper lingered in her mind, casting a shadow over the approaching Easter celebrations. The following morning, Sarah felt drained and on edge. Breakfast with her parents was filled with an awkward silence. When the topic of Easter celebrations came up, Sarah felt a lump form in her throat. How could she possibly explain what she saw to her parents, who dismissed everything beyond baked ham and an egg hunt as teenage jitters? At school, she sought out Ben and Emily, hoping to find some sense of normalcy. Ben, already in a mischievous mood, greeted her with a mocking bow. Well, well, if it isn't the Easter Bunny Whisperer, did the creepy bunny tell you where all the good chocolate is hidden? Chapter 2, Whispers in the Dark. Sarah ignored his teasing and pulled him and Emily aside. In hushed tones, she recounted the events of the previous night, her voice trembling slightly. Ben listened with a raised eyebrow, a flicker of doubt momentarily replacing his usual smirk. Emily, however, remained skeptical. Are you sure you weren't dreaming, Sarah? Emily asked, her brow furrowed. Maybe the excitement of Easter got to you. It wasn't a dream, Emily, Sarah insisted, her voice firm despite the tremor in her hands. I saw it, a figure on the roof, wearing Mr. Henderson's Easter bunny costume. But it, it wasn't right. It moved too fast and it whispered something. Ben let out a scoff. Come on, Sarah. You're telling me a giant, dusty bunny costume came to life and started whispering secrets at your window? Relax. It was probably a stray cat or something. Despite his flippant tone, Sarah saw a flicker of unease in his eyes. The image of the figure on the rooftop remained etched in her mind, too vivid to be readily dismissed. The following days that led up to Easter Sunday were filled with a growing sense of unease. Sarah kept a watchful eye on Mr. Henderson's house, but the giant bunny remained safely propped in the garage window, looking decidedly inanimate. Yet, strange occurrences continued to plague Sarah. One night, while studying late, she swore she heard a faint whisper coming from outside her window. It was the same guttural voice barely audible, yet chillingly distinct watching. Sleep became a distant memory, replaced by an ever-present sense of paranoia. Even Ben's attempts to distract her with light-hearted jokes fell flat. He seemed to sense her growing fear, even if he didn't fully believe her story. Emily, however, began to notice unsettling details about the town's Easter traditions. The annual egg hunt, usually filled with laughter and childish glee, seemed to have taken on a darker tone. The decorations, once cheerful and colorful, now seemed strangely menacing. The brightly painted eggs, usually adorned with playful faces, sported unsettling symbols, spiral patterns, and cryptic runes. One afternoon, while walking through the town square, Emily noticed a group of young children participating in an Easter egg decorating session. They seemed different, their usual chatter replaced by an unsettling silence. Their eyes, wide and vacant, seemed fixed on the eggs they decorated, their small hands moving with a practiced efficiency, etching the same cryptic symbols onto the brightly colored shells. A shiver ran down Emily's spine. These weren't children excitedly decorating for Easter. They seemed possessed, acting under an unseen influence. Fear gnawed at her. Was Sarah right? Was there something more sinister at play beneath the surface of their seemingly idyllic town's Easter traditions? That night, Sarah found Emily huddled in the library, her brow furrowed as she scanned through a dusty, leather-bound book. Look at this, Sarah, Emily exclaimed her voice trembling slightly. She pointed to a faded woodcut illustration depicting a grotesque, rabbit-like figure with glowing eyes, surrounded by children with empty stares. 
Below the image, faded text spoke of ancient rituals, of spirits who feasted on fear, disguised as harmless Easter figures to lure unsuspecting victims. A cold dread washed over Sarah. The legend described the figure she saw on the rooftop, the whispers, the unsettling grip on the town's Easter traditions. They weren't just decorations, they were a conduit, a way for these malevolent entities to exert their influence. As Sarah and Emily shared a horrified glance, they knew they couldn't ignore it any longer. They had to uncover more about these Easter mask terrors and find a way to stop them before they consumed the town in their chilling grip. Chapter 3. Unearthing the Legend The faded library air hung heavy with the scent of old paper and dust. Sarah and Emily huddled around the worn, leather-bound book, their faces illuminated by the flickering light of a single desk lamp. Ben, initially skeptical, had reluctantly joined them after witnessing Emily's chilling discovery. These things sound like some bad Easter bunny horror movie, he muttered, his voice laced with a newfound nervousness. Look at the date of this book, Emily countered, pointing towards a faded inscription on the flyleaf. One thousand seven hundred seventy-three. This isn't some made-up story, Ben. It's local history. The book detailed a chilling legend passed down through generations. Whispers exchanged in hushed tones around flickering candlelight. It spoke of malevolent spirits who preyed on human fear, cloaking themselves in the innocent guise of Easter figures, the playful bunny, the colorful eggs, the joyous egg hunts. These entities, the legend called them the Peeping Toms, fed off the fear they generated their power reaching its peak during the height of Easter celebrations. Sarah felt a cold knot of dread tighten in her stomach. The description perfectly mirrored the unsettling events, plaguing the town, the strange figure on the rooftop, the whispers, the increasingly eerie Easter decorations. But the book offered a glimmer of hope. Hidden amongst the spidery script, was a section outlining a ritual of banishment. It spoke of a complex ceremony that required gathering specific items. A crow's feather plucked at midnight, a child's laughter recorded during the sunrise, and a symbolic offering representing the essence of Easter. The ingredients themselves were unsettling. Crow's feather, a symbol of ill omen, felt fitting for banishing these dark entities. But a child's laughter at sunrise. It seemed almost cruel to pull a child awake at such an ungodly hour. The final symbolic offering was the most cryptic, the essence of Easter. What exactly did that entail? This is insane, Ben scoffed, running a hand through his hair. Crow's feathers, sunrise laughter, who even has a crow hanging around their backyard. And what qualifies as the essence of Easter, anyway? Despite his skepticism, his voice lacked its usual bravado. He clearly shared a sliver of their newfound fear. There has to be another way, Sarah whispered, her voice trembling slightly. The thought of confronting these malevolent entities filled her with dread. Emily, ever the pragmatist, shook her head. According to this, there isn't. The ritual seems specific. Disrupting any part of it could make things worse. A tense silence descended upon them. The weight of the situation, the responsibility that had fallen onto their shoulders, pressed down heavily. Were they truly the only ones who saw the darkness lurking beneath the surface of their seemingly idyllic town? The next few days were a whirlwind of activity. Armed with the information from the book, the teenagers embarked on a covert mission to gather the necessary ingredients. Driven by a growing sense of urgency, they ventured into the heart of the forest, bordering the town in search of a crow's feather. The task, seemingly simple, proved to be fraught with tension. Each rustle of leaves, every calling crow in the distance, sent their hearts pounding in their chests. Finally, under the cloak of a moonless night, 
Sarah managed to snag a single feather from a sleeping crow perched on a low-hanging branch. Relief washed over her, quickly replaced by a surge of apprehension as they made their way back home, the feather clutched tightly in Sarah's hand. The task of capturing a child's laughter at sunrise fell to Emily. Unable to bring themselves to wake up a friend or sibling at such an ungodly hour, they devised a plan. They set up a makeshift recording device outside Sarah's window, aiming it towards the park across the street. The morning of Easter Sunday arrived, a cold, gray dawn replacing the usual spring sunshine. With bated breath, they pressed record just as the first rays of sunlight peeked over the horizon. The sound that filled the air was a jarring contrast to the grim atmosphere, the joyous, carefree laughter of children gathering for the town's annual Easter egg hunt. A sliver of hope pierced through the darkness. The essence of Easter proved to be the most difficult challenge. The legend offered no clear definition. Was it the joy of children searching for eggs? The act of giving gifts? After much deliberation, they decided on a chocolate Easter bunny. Holding the items in their hands, the crow's feather, the recorder playing the child's laughter on a continuous loop, and a large hollow chocolate bunny a sense of desperate hope flickered within them. But alongside it, a chilling reality settled in. Reality settled in. Chapter 4. The Costumed Threat If the ritual failed, the consequences were too horrifying to contemplate. Taking a deep breath, they decided to put their plan into action before the sun reached its zenith, the time when the Peeping Tom's power supposedly peaked. The town square bustled with activity as they arrived. Children, dressed in colorful bunny ears and chick costumes, eagerly awaited the start of the annual Easter egg hunt. Parents chatted excitedly, their faces filled with the familiar joy of the holiday. Yet, a subtle dissonance prickled at Sarah's senses. The brightly colored decorations seemed to pulsate with an unnatural energy and the children's laughter held a manic edge. As Sarah and Emily surveyed the scene, Ben wandered off, drawn by a group of youngsters gathered around a seemingly innocuous display. A woman dressed in a faded floral dress and a straw bonnet stood behind a table adorned with bowls filled with brightly colored eggs. Welcome, children, she chirped, her voice overly sweet. These aren't your ordinary Easter eggs. Each one contains a special Easter blessing. Pick one and see what awaits you. The children, their eyes wide and vacant, swarmed around the table, their chatter reduced to eager whispers. Ben watched with a growing unease as they reached for the eggs. As a young boy picked one up, a strange symbol, the same one Sarah and Emily had seen on the library book flickered across its surface for a fleeting moment before disappearing. A cold shiver ran down Ben's spine. The seemingly harmless tradition now felt sinister. Were these more than just decorated eggs? Were they conduits for the Peeping Tom's influence? Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream pierced the air. Sarah and Emily whipped their heads around, their hearts pounding. A young girl stood frozen, clutching a broken egg in her hand. Tears streamed down her face as she screamed again, a sound devoid of childish frustration and filled with raw, primal terror. The other children, momentarily startled, quickly resumed their task, their eyes gleaming with an unsettling intensity. The woman in the floral dress approached the distraught girl, her smile twisting into a grotesque grimace. Don't worry, dear, she cooed, her voice dripping with a sickly sweetness. The peeping toms just want to play little game. The words sent a wave of nausea crashing over Sarah. Just then, Emily nudged her, her face pale. Look, she whispered, pointing towards a nearby tree. Hanging from a low branch, nestled amongst the colorful plastic eggs scattered during a previous hunt, was a single object a decorated Easter egg. 
It was unlike any of the others, crafted from a coarse, dark material, its surface devoid of playful designs. Instead, it bore a single, chilling inscription, scrawled in jagged black lettering. Why you were you any XT? Panic clawed at Sarah's throat. This was a direct threat, a confirmation of their worst fears. The peeping towns knew. They knew about their plan, about the ritual, and they were challenging them. The festive atmosphere of the Easter egg hunt had vanished, replaced by a suffocating sense of dread. They needed to act fast. The ritual had to happen before sunset, before the peeping Tom's power reached its peak. With one last glance at the terrified children and the sinister woman behind the table, Sarah, Ben, and Emily slipped away from the crowd, their hearts pounding in unison, their determination to stop these malevolent entities hardening with each passing moment adrenaline pumping through veins. Chapter 5 Facing Fear Sarah, Ben, and Emily weaved through the throngs of chattering parents and excited children. The cryptic egg clutched tightly in Sarah's hand. The playful atmosphere of the Easter egg hunt had morphed into a suffocating nightmare. The children's laughter now echoed with an unsettling edge, and the vibrantly colored decorations seemed to pulsate with an unnatural energy. Reaching the outskirts of the town square, they ducked into a secluded alleyway, the oppressive brick walls offering a small sense of solace from the chaos outside. Huddled together, they examined the ominous egg. The inscription, Y-U-R-E in the X-T, seemed to writhe and pulsate in the weak sunlight filtering through the alley. They know, Ben muttered, his voice laced with a newfound fear. The air of skepticism that had clouded his demeanor had finally evaporated. We have to perform the ritual, Emily stated resolutely, pushing aside the tremor in her voice. Before sunset, Sarah nodded, her mind racing. According to the book, the ritual needed to be performed at the town's abandoned cemetery, a place shrouded in local legends and whispered tales. It was a place they'd always avoided, preferring the comfort of familiar playgrounds and bustling streets. Now, it was their only hope. Emerging from the alley, they navigated the back streets, avoiding the main roads where parents and children continued their Easter celebrations. The once idyllic streets now felt alien, choked with an unseen menace. Every rustle of leaves, every creak of an old porch swing, sent shivers down their spines. The cemetery loomed ahead, its stark white headstones and crumbling mausoleums bathed in an ominous afternoon light. A thick silence lay over the grounds, broken only by the mournful cry of a crow circling overhead. This felt like a place forgotten by time, a perfect breeding ground for the darkness they intended to confront. Taking a deep breath, Sarah pushed open the creaking iron gate. The rusty hinges groaned in protest, a chilling sound that resonated within the silent cemetery. They ventured deeper, their footsteps crunching on the gravel path. The weight of their mission bore down on them with every step. They finally reached the location mentioned in the book, a crumbling stone mausoleum perched on a small hillock. As they approached, a sense of foreboding washed over them. The air grew thick and stagnant, and the hairs on their arms prickled with goosebumps. This is it, Emily said, her voice barely a whisper. She pulled out the crow's feather and the recorder, a determined glint in her eyes. Sarah took out the chocolate Easter bunny, its hollow shell feeling strangely empty in her hands. Was this the right essence of Easter? A sliver of doubt gnawed at her, but there was no time to question. Time was running out. Following the instructions from the book, they positioned themselves around the mausoleum door. Ben, still shaken but resolute, held the recorder close ready to capture the sunrise laughter at the first sign of sunset. Emily poised the crow's feather over the keyhole, its black sheen absorbing the fading light. Ready? Sarah asked, her voice barely audible. The others nodded, 
their faces grim. With a trembling hand, Sarah smashed the chocolate bunny against the mausoleum door. A sickly sweet scent filled the air, mingling with the damp earth and decaying leaves. Emily, without hesitation, plunged the crow's feather into the keyhole, turning it three times counterclockwise. A low groan echoed from within the mausoleum, followed by a series of guttural whispers that seemed to emanate from the surrounding gravestones. The ground began to tremble, and a chilling wind swept through the cemetery, whipping against their faces and tearing at their clothes. Suddenly, the air shimmered, and figures materialized from the shadows. Tall, gaunt figures, with elongated limbs and vacant eyes, clad in grotesque parodies of Easter costumes, a monstrous bunny head, a cracked and peeling eggshell. The peeping toms had arrived, their grotesque forms a manifestation of the fear they thrived on. Panic threatened to overwhelm Sarah, but she forced it down. There was no turning back. As the figures lunged towards them, the recorder crackled to life, filling the air with the joyous laughter of a child. It was a jarring contrast to the terror that gripped them, a beacon of hope in the encroaching darkness. The effect was immediate. The peeping toms recoiled, their monstrous forms convulsing as the laughter washed over them. Screams, filled with a primal rage, tore from their throats, their once vacant eyes now filled with a burning hatred. The ground continued to tremble, the mausoleum door groaning under the pressure of some unseen force. Sarah knew this wouldn't be easy, but laughter continued to play. Chapter 6 Fractured Traditions Its cheerful melody, a stark contrast to the chaos unfolding around them. The peeping toms writhed on the ground, their monstrous forms contorting as if in agony. The air crackled with a raw energy, threatening to split the very fabric of reality. Sarah knew this wasn't over. They had to act fast, complete the ritual before the laughter stopped or the peeping toms overwhelmed them. With a surge of adrenaline, she grabbed a broken piece of brick from the crumbling path and smashed it against the engraved symbol etched above the mausoleum door. The symbol, which they had recognized from the library book, a distorted Easter cross shattered into a million pieces. A blinding flash erupted from the point of impact, momentarily engulfing everything in its white light. When Sarah blinked away the spots in her vision, the world had shifted. The peeping toms were gone, the air felt lighter, the oppressive tension receding. However, a lingering sense of unease hung in the air. The cemetery appeared different somehow, the shadows deeper, the silence even more pronounced. As they caught their breath, Sarah noticed a faint trail of shimmering dust leading away from the shattered symbol. Curiosity peaked, they followed the trail, cautiously navigating the overgrown path. The trail led them to a hidden clearing within the cemetery grounds. Standing in the center was a weathered stone structure, its shape vaguely resembling an altar. Carvings adorned its surface, depicting scenes of a warped Easter celebration, grotesque bunny figures, sacrificing helpless children, monstrous eggs spewing forth dark smoke. A wave of nausea washed over Sarah. These weren't mere Easter traditions. They were twisted rituals, a dark undercurrent hidden beneath the surface of their seemingly idyllic town. The religious symbolism associated with Easter sacrifice, rebirth had taken on a sinister meaning. Suddenly, a voice startled them. What are you doing here? A woman, tall and gaunt with piercing blue eyes, stood at the edge of the clearing. She was dressed in an old-fashioned black dress, her clothes dusted with cobwebs. Her gaze swept over them, a coldness settling upon them like a shroud. We were just looking around, Sarah stammered, her voice barely a whisper. The woman snorted. You're trespassing on sacred ground. This isn't a place for children. Sacred ground? Emily countered her voice gaining strength. 
These aren't sacred rituals. They're dark and twisted. The woman's face contorted in anger. Don't you understand? These traditions have protected us for generations. They keep the peeping toms at bay. Sarah's eyes widened. They created the peeping toms. This is how they feed them, by perpetuating these rituals of fear. The woman drew herself up, her voice dripping with a chilling authority. Silence, child. Easter is not about joy and bunnies. It's about sacrifice, about appeasing those who lurk in the shadows. A horrifying realization dawned on Sarah. This woman, along with others like her, were not victims of the Peeping Toms. They were complicit, upholding these dark traditions to appease the malevolent entities they feared. The woman's gaze shifted towards the shattered symbol above the mausoleum door. You've disrupted the balance, she hissed. Now, the Peeping Toms will return, stronger than ever. Fear threatened to consume Sarah, but she held her ground. Maybe, but this time we'll be ready. The woman scoffed, but a flicker of uncertainty flickered in her eyes. With a final menacing glare, she turned and vanished into the thicket of trees that bordered the clearing. Leaving the unsettling encounter behind, the teenagers emerged from the cemetery, shaken but resolute. They knew their fight wasn't over. They may have weakened the Peeping Toms, but the source of their power, the townspeople clinging to these twisted traditions, remained. They needed to find a way to break the cycle, to expose the darkness that festered beneath the surface of their seemingly idyllic Easter celebrations. Easter celebrations. Chapter 7. The Price of Knowledge The weight of their encounter with the strange woman in the cemetery pressed down on them as they trudged back towards the outskirts of town. Her words echoed in Sarah's mind. You've disrupted the balance. Disrupted it for the better, she fiercely argued with herself. But the chilling certainty in the woman's voice sent shivers down her spine. Had they truly set in motion a chain of events they couldn't control? Back at Sarah's house, exhaustion finally caught up with them. They collapsed onto the living room floor the weight of the day pressing heavily upon them. Needing answers, Sarah dug out the dusty library book once more, her fingers tracing the faded text. As Emily and Ben scanned through the pages, a chilling detail leaped off the page, a section dedicated to historical accounts. It spoke of a string of disappearances that had plagued the town over the centuries, all coinciding with Easter celebrations. The descriptions, were vague. Whispers passed down through generations, but the pattern was undeniable. Suddenly, a passage jumped out at them, its faded lettering stark against the yellowed page. It detailed the true price of the banishing ritual, a personal sacrifice. One member of the group needed to offer something precious, something irreplaceable, to permanently sever the connection between the peeping toms and the town. A heavy silence descended upon the room. The ritual, as they understood it, involved disrupting the flow of fear, the very lifeblood of these malevolent entities. But what constituted a worthy sacrifice? A treasured memory? A cherished possession? The weight of this decision hung heavy in the air, fracturing the sense of unity they had shared until now. This is insane, Ben blurted out his voice laced with panic. We can't possibly sacrifice anything. There has to be another way. There isn't, Emily countered, her voice surprisingly calm. The book is clear. This is the price we have to pay. Sarah felt a cold knot of dread tighten in her stomach. She understood the logic of Emily's words, but the idea of offering something irreplaceable was an unbearable thought. The carefree joy of childhood memories, the comfort of a familiar object, could any of it truly outweigh the threat of the peeping toms? The group fractured, their initial camaraderie replaced by a tense silence. Sarah retreated to her room, 
the weight of the decision pressing down on her. Looking around at the familiar clutter of her childhood, the framed pictures on her desk, the dusty trophies on her shelf, none of it seemed trivial anymore. Each object held a memory, a fragment of her life. How could she choose just one? As dusk settled over the town, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple, Sarah knew she didn't have the luxury of time. They needed to act before the peeping toms returned fueled by the renewed fear their disrupted ritual must have caused. Was she truly willing to sacrifice a part of herself, a piece of her past, to save her town and her friends? Chapter 8. The Hunt Begins The weight of the impending decision hung heavy in the air as Sarah stared out her window. The last rays of sunlight bled across the horizon, painting the sky in mournful shades of orange and purple. Sleep wouldn't come, her mind endlessly replaying the chilling details of the ritual. Sacrificing a piece of herself felt unbearable, yet the alternative, the return of the peeping tongues, stronger and more vengeful, was far more terrifying. With a deep breath, Sarah emerged from her room, the faint glow of the television guiding her to the living room. Ben and Emily sat huddled on the couch, their faces etched with worry. Despite their earlier disagreement, a silent understanding had settled upon them. They were in this together, whatever the cost. I think I know what I have to do, Sarah announced, her voice hoarse from lack of sleep. Relief washed over Emily's face, while Ben remained skeptical, his brow furrowed in concern. Sarah explained her plan, the sacrifice she was willing to make and a flicker of determination replaced the worry in their eyes. The legend outlined three additional ingredients required to complete the ritual, each tied to a specific location within the town. These locations held a special significance for each of them places of cherished memories, tinged with a touch of personal fear. For Sarah, it was the abandoned amusement park on the outskirts of town, a place once filled with laughter and joy, it now stood as a decaying shell, a playground for shadows and whispers. The ritual demanded a token of lost innocence, and Sarah knew exactly what she had to retrieve a worn teddy bear she'd left behind on her last visit years ago, a symbol of a childhood long gone. For Ben, the destination was the town's forgotten library, a place he'd always avoided due to his childhood fear of enclosed spaces. The library held a specific book, a collection of ghost stories passed down through generations containing the town's darkest secrets. The sacrifice required a piece of courage, a symbolic act of facing his deepest fear. And for Emily, it was the old oak tree at the edge of the forest, a place where she'd spent countless hours reading and daydreaming. According to the legend, they needed a symbol of hope, a reminder of the light they were fighting to protect. For Emily, it was a handwritten poem tucked within a hollow branch, a testament to her dreams and aspirations. Retrieving these items wouldn't be easy. The peeping toms, emboldened by the disrupted ritual, were becoming bolder. Strange shadows seemed to linger at the corners of their vision. Unsettling whispers filled the night air, and unsettling pranks, broken windows, poisoned pet food plagued them relentlessly. Yet, they persevered, driven by a desperate hope and a newfound unity. Their friendship, once strained by the weight of the situation, had become their shield, their source of strength. They ventured out at night, relying on quick thinking and a shared determination to overcome their individual fears. Sarah braved the creaking rides and overgrown pathways of the abandoned amusement park, finally retrieving her dusty teddy bear from beneath a rusted roller coaster. Each creak of the decaying structure sent shivers down her spine, but the thought of freeing her town from the peeping toms fueled her courage. Then, his heart pounding in his chest, navigated the dusty labyrinth of the abandoned library. Every cobweb-draped shelf, 
every creaking floorboard tested his resolve. He finally unearthed the ancient book of ghost stories, its leather cover damp and cold to the touch. It felt like a tangible piece of the darkness they were fighting against, but Ben held his ground, his fear replaced by a steely determination. Finally, Emily, overcome with a sense of nostalgia, stood beneath the old oak tree, her hand reaching into the familiar hollow in its trunk. As she retrieved the faded poem, a wave of childhood memories washed over her moments of pure joy and unbridled optimism. It was this very spark of hope that they needed to preserve to banish the darkness that threatened to consume their town. Returning from their separate missions, they gathered in Sarah's room, a sense of accomplishment mixed with trepidation hanging in the air. They now possessed all the ingredients the crow's feather, the recorder playing the child's laughter, the chocolate Easter bunny, a token of lost innocence, a testament of courage, and a symbol of hope. The final battle was upon them. Chapter 9, A Race Against Time. The air crackled with nervous energy as Sarah spread the ritual ingredients on her bedroom floor. Each object held a weight far greater than its physical form. The chipped enamel of the chocolate bunny, the worn stitching of Sarah's teddy bear, these were not just tokens, they were fragments of their past. Sacrifices laid bare on the makeshift altar before them. The book spoke of a specific time for the ritual, the stroke of midnight on Easter Sunday. The peeping Tom's power peaked during this time, making them most vulnerable. But Easter Sunday was a mere two days away, leaving them with a tight deadline. Every passing moment felt charged with a growing sense of urgency. They spent the next two days in a whirlwind of preparation. They studied the book, meticulously memorizing the incantation that would bind the peeping toms back to their realm. They practiced the precise movements, ensuring a flawless execution of the ritual. All the while, the ominous presence of the peeping toms grew more pronounced. Strange occurrences plagued them unsettling figures lurking at the edge of their vision. Disembodied laughter echoing through empty hallways, objects vanishing and reappearing in unexpected places. Sleep offered no respite. Nightmares, vivid and terrifying, filled their dreams, fueling their anxieties. Then, a day before Easter Sunday, Emily vanished. One moment, she was helping Sarah research the incantation online. The next, her chair was empty, her computer screen glowing with a single chilling message. You're next. Panic clawed at Sarah's throat. The peeping toms were escalating, playing a cruel game of cat and mouse. Fear threatened to paralyze them, but the thought of Emily spurred them into action. Finding her was now paramount, but they couldn't neglect the ritual. It was their only hope of banishing the peeping toms permanently and ensuring Emily's safety. Ben, his face pale but resolute, took charge. We split up, he said, his voice surprisingly steady. Sarah, you finish prepping the ritual. I'll contact the police and search the town. We'll find Emily. Sarah nodded, her heart pounding against her ribs. With trembling hands, she set about preparing the final pieces of the ritual. Tears welled up in her eyes as she held Emily's handwritten poem. This wasn't just a symbol of hope. It was a reminder of their friendship, a bond they wouldn't let the peeping toms destroy. As midnight approached on Easter Sunday, the air in Sarah's room grew thick with anticipation. The playful laughter from the recorder sounded almost mocking in the tense silence. Outside, the town bustled with Easter festivities, oblivious to the battle raging in the shadows. Then came the sound of the front door slamming open, followed by Ben's breathless voice. Sarah, I found her. Relief washed over her, so intense it almost knocked her off her feet. Emily stumbled into the room, shaken but unharmed. They didn't have time for explanations. The clock tower began to chime, 
its deep tolls echoing through the night. Midnight, time was up. Taking a deep breath, Sarah launched into the incantation, her voice trembling at first, then growing stronger with each word. The room pulsed with energy, the air crackling and shimmering. Together, they completed the ritual, the crow's feather etching a symbol of banishment on the bedroom wall. A deafening shriek echoed in the house, a sound of pure rage and frustration. Then, a chilling silence descended, heavy and absolute. They had done it. The peeping toms were gone. Exhaustion crashed over them in waves. As they embraced, tears streaming down their faces, a sense of relief washed over them, bittersweet and hard won. The town was safe, but the ordeal had left its mark. Scars, both physical and emotional, would serve as a constant reminder of the darkness they had faced. But as the first rays of dawn painted the sky in soft hues of pink and orange, a flicker of hope ignited in their hearts. They had faced their fears, defied ancient evils, and emerged stronger. Town of Harmony Creek might forever carry the shadow of the Peeping Toms, but its spirit, like theirs, would forever be marked by courage, resilience, and the unwavering power of friendship. Chapter 10, The Unseen Threat. Relief washed over Sarah in a tidal wave as she pulled Emily into a fierce hug. The fear that had gnawed at her for the past day threatened to consume her entirely, but the sight of her friend, weak but safe, anchored her. How did you find her? Sarah choked out, her voice thick with emotion. Ben, his face pale but etched with determination, explained how he'd traced Emily's phone signal to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. The place held a notorious reputation for being haunted, a perfect hiding spot for the peeping toms. The revelation sent a jolt of fear through Sarah. The ritual. Time was running out. With a renewed sense of urgency, they piled into Ben's car, the silence broken only by the frantic drumming of rain against the windshield. The warehouse loomed ahead, a hulking silhouette against the backdrop of the storm-wracked sky. Its windows were boarded up, and an air of desolation hung heavy in the air. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and a desperate hope, they ventured inside. The warehouse was a labyrinth of dust-covered crates and cobweb-draped machinery. Every creak, every groan echoed eerily in the vast emptiness. Then, a blood-curdling scream pierced the silence, sending shivers down their spines. Emily, Sarah shrieked, her voice echoing in the cavernous space. The sound spurred them forward, their pace quickening into a desperate run. The scream came again, closer this time, laced with terror and a bone-chilling plea for help. They burst into a dimly lit room, its source illuminated by a single flickering bulb. Emily hung suspended in the air, bound by unseen restraints, her eyes wide with terror. Clad in grotesque parodies of Easter attire, a tattered bunny mask, a cracked and peeling eggshell figure surrounded her, their forms radiating a malevolent energy. Adrenaline surged through Sarah's veins. These were no ordinary people. These were the peeping toms, their true forms revealed in all their horrifying glory. A primal scream tore from Ben's throat as he lunged towards the nearest figure, only to be met with an invisible force that sent him sprawling across the floor. Panic threatened to overwhelm Sarah, but the sight of Emily's terrified face steeled her resolve. They had to get her out of there, complete the ritual. But how? The book lay back at Sarah's house, miles away. Suddenly, a chilling realization dawned on her. The ritual wasn't about the specific ingredients. It was about channeling their collective belief, their hope, their courage. They were the weapons against these unseen entities. Together, she screamed, her voice echoing in the vast space. We can fight this, Emily. 
Her voice, hoarse but determined, echoed Sarah's words. Then, slowly rising from the floor, joined the chant. Their voices, at first shaky and uncertain, grew stronger with each repetition, filling the room with a wave of defiance. The peeping toms recoiled, their grotesque forms contorting in agony as the wave of positive energy washed over them. The warehouse pulsed with an unseen energy, the air thick with the clash of light and darkness. We won't let you hurt her, Sarah roared, her voice filled with a power she never knew she possessed. The others joined her, a chorus of defiance against the unseen entities. With a final, agonizing shriek, the peeping toms dissolved into wisps of dark smoke, vanishing without a trace. Emily, freed from her restraints, collapsed onto the floor, tears streaming down her face. They had won, but the victory felt hollow. The battle had been brutal, a terrifying encounter with unseen horrors. The warehouse, once a symbol of fear, now stood as a testament to their courage, their unwavering friendship. As they emerged from the warehouse, the storm had subsided, leaving the sky washed clean and clear. The first rays of dawn painted the horizon soft hues of pink and orange. A new beginning after a night of terror. Chapter 11, Sacrifice and Redemption. The storm had passed, leaving behind a sky washed clean and vibrant with the colors of a new dawn. Emerging from the oppressive darkness of the warehouse, Sarah, Ben, and Emily stumbled into the cool morning air, their bodies battered, their spirits shaken, but their bond stronger than ever. The silence hung heavy, punctuated only by the distant chirping of birds and the rhythmic drip of water from the storm-ravaged trees. The warehouse loomed behind them, a dark silhouette against the backdrop of the newly painted sky a chilling reminder of the battle they had just fought. Emily, still weak from her ordeal, clung to Sarah, her eyes filled with a mixture of relief and terror. Ben, his face bruised and scratched, leaned heavily against a nearby lamppost, his gaze fixed on the ground. The victory, hard won and terrifying, felt incomplete. The book had spoken of a sacrifice, a personal offering required to sever the connection with the Peeping Toms permanently. In the heat of the battle, they had managed to banish the entities through sheer force of will, but a nagging sense of unease gnawed at Sarah. Had they truly succeeded? As if on cue, Emily looked up, her voice barely a whisper. Did we did? We win? Sarah met her gaze, a lump forming in her throat. She knew the truth. Their victory, while real, came at a cost. The book hadn't lied. There had to be a sacrifice. Taking a deep breath, Sarah reached into her pocket and pulled out the worn teddy bear, its fur matted and dusty. It wasn't just a childhood memento. It represented a part of her innocence, a fragment of a past long gone. This was the sacrifice the ritual demanded. With trembling hands, she held the teddy bear close to her chest, picturing countless childhood memories flooding back carefree laughter, warm summer days, a sense of security that now felt like a distant dream. Tears welled up in her eyes, blurring her vision. Then, with a resolute nod, she closed her eyes and whispered a silent goodbye. A surge of energy pulsed through her, as she ripped the teddy bear in half, the stuffing spilling out like a silent scream. When she opened her eyes, the world seemed to shift. A faint hum resonated in the air, a wave of energy radiating from the ripped teddy bear. It was a bittersweet farewell, a symbolic offering to banish the darkness for good. The air grew lighter, the oppressive feeling that had hung over the town for generations lifting like a heavy fog. The distant sounds of Easter celebrations, joyous music and excited chatter reached their ears, a stark contrast to the ordeal they had just endured. The townspeople, 
oblivious to the battle, fought and won in the shadows, embraced the spirit of Easter with renewed fervor. For them, it was a day of joy, of family gatherings and delicious treats. Little did they know they were celebrating a victory won by three teenagers, a victory secured with a sacrifice far greater than any of them could have imagined. As Sarah, Ben, and Emily walked away from the warehouse, the weight of the experience settled upon them. They had faced their fears, confronted a darkness they never knew existed, and emerged on the other side forever changed. The town of Harmony Creek might forever carry the faint whispers of the peeping toms, but the spirit of its residents and the unwavering bond forged between three friends would forever shine brighter. Chapter 12. Lingering Shadows The remnants of the ripped teddy bear lay scattered on the ground, a stark reminder of the price they had paid. Sarah turned away, the image seared into her memory. The morning sun, usually a source of comfort, felt harsh and unforgiving. The sounds of Easter festivities, once a joyous backdrop to her childhood, now grated on her nerves. The celebratory atmosphere of the town felt like a cruel mockery of their ordeal. People bustled past them, oblivious to the battle they had just fought, the darkness they had banished. A suffocating sense of isolation washed over Sarah. How could they explain what they'd experienced? Who would believe them? Back at Sarah's house, exhaustion finally claimed them. They collapsed onto the living room floor, the weight of the past few days pressing down on them like a physical burden. Sleep, however, offered no solace. Nightmares, vivid and terrifying, replayed the horrors of the warehouse, the grotesque forms of the peeping toms contorting in the darkness. The days that followed were a blur of forced normalcy. They attended school, went through the motions of everyday life, but a chasm had opened between them and the world around them. The carefree laughter they once shared had been replaced by a quiet understanding, a bond forged in shared trauma. The town itself seemed unchanged. The colorful Easter decorations remained. The joyous spirit of the holiday lingered in the air. Yet, for Sarah, Ben, and Emily, the vibrant colors now held a sinister undercurrent, a constant reminder of the darkness they had glimpsed. One evening, as they sat by the creek, the familiar gurgling water now echoing with an unsettling undertone, Sarah voiced the question that had been gnawing at them all. Are we sure they're gone? Ben looked up, his face drawn. The book said the sacrifice severs the connection. Emily, her gaze fixed on the setting sun, painting the sky in fiery hues, added, But what if there's more to it? What if there's something else out there? Her words hung heavy in the air, a seed of doubt taking root. Had they truly vanquished the peeping toms? Or had they simply driven them back into the shadows, waiting for the opportune moment to return? The unease lingered, a constant companion. They knew the townspeople would continue their Easter traditions, oblivious to the darkness that lurked beneath the surface. And they, the guardians of a secret far too terrifying to share, would forever carry the weight of their sacrifice, a constant reminder of the battle fought and the chilling uncertainty of victory. As the last rays of sunlight dipped below the horizon, a single crow circled overhead, its harsh caw echoing in the gathering twilight. A shiver ran down Sarah's spine. Perhaps the Easter celebrations weren't the only tradition destined to endure. Perhaps the darkness they had faced wasn't entirely vanquished but merely waiting for a new generation of guardians, forever vigilant against the lingering shadows. Ring shadows.